so excited, A, to have found this group, but also to be given the opportunity to talk with all of you. I sort of knew that I'd found my tribe when I saw Bianca's post about the network. Tagline I used for my business is do better or be better, do better and create better solutions. So this is like home to me. This is great. I work with businesses and organizations whose leaders find themselves deep into the weeds and are overwhelmed. They sense that they have a need to change and they are looking for help to find better ways to manage their business or their organization. I work with them to create real strategies that they can work with to create less stress, find more time and generate more revenue. A lot of times I'll serve as an accountability partner, a team builder, and always as a truth teller. I also design strategic meetings and events, conferences or seminars, leadership retreats, board, board, of, uh, board of directors retreats, and also fundraising events. Um, thanks to Samantha as part of this group, I have just recently joined Aaliyah, and I'm looking forward to participating with them as well. That's good. I also support mission critical projects that the business, the organization doesn't have the time or the talent to be able to get done. Ultimately, my goal is to help the organization move forward from whatever is holding them back. Finally, I have a passion for finding ways to help businesses be more green and to create more sustainable solutions for the planet. And I'm looking for ways to integrate that in more of what I do. I have a network that I've just recently started that is a network for sustainable meetings and events. And we're gonna be launching our first program at the end of June. I started this business three years ago after getting laid off for the third time. And like so many have pivoted through the process as COVID changed the landscape of what we were able to do. My business and I are absolutely a work in progress. And I have to say the thing, the thing that I find the hardest is actually talking about myself. So here we are, this is my practice time. I guess a little bit about me. I think that I am an extraordinarily fortunate woman and I have done things that many people would never have had the opportunity to do. Some by choice and some by circumstance. I have three significantly older brothers and they all believe that their advanced wisdom and their experiences qualified them to tell me, you can't do that. And one of them actually still exhibits that same trait, which elicits embarrassingly the same annoying little sister response, want to bet? So even today, that's a phrase that tends to motivate me more than anything else. Someone saying that can't be done is a surefire way to make me get up there and prove that, oh yeah. Yeah, I can. I was born and raised in Connecticut in a suburb very similar to Sonoma County, right outside of New York City. It was an odd community that was two acre zoning, which outside of New York City is unusual. So I was raised doing a lot of gardening, going to a lot of farmers markets actually the same things I'm doing now in Sonoma County. And so I was raised always having a grandparent in the house. And that meant that I learned how to do things like canning, gardening, fishing, sewing, and things that were unusual while still getting dressed up to go into the city and go see plays, hear musicals, and all the other things. Music was always a big part of my life. And part of that was learning that when you sing together, and to work harmoniously together, you can get things done. Um, the impossible becomes possible from doing that. And I carry that into the work that I do, helping people find ways to work together and produce better outcomes. As you might guess, I have always been an organizer. I get that legitimately from my mother. She was a caterer. And when I was little, she used to throw these immense house parties for 125 people. And often they were done at the drop of a hat, like the first snowfall. So we would have sledding parties and she'd call up all of her friends and we would have 125 people at our house on Saturday. That was a useful thing as I went into planning. I planned choir tours, I planned fundraising events, I planned festivals, all while I was in high school. 
carried that on into college as well. I have a BA and an MED. I have the MED because my bachelor's degree was in medieval and Renaissance studies. Had no idea what I was thinking when I, I said that I was going to major there. But an MED seemed to be a good thing. And I spent the next 10 years working in higher ed, both in student affairs and in academic affairs. Lots of fun, lots of different opportunities. I was always in a planning capacity, but it was often in leadership and organizational development too. Like I said, I have an unusual amount of stories and circumstances that have given me exposure into other areas. The second year that I was in grad school, there is a relevance to this. I started, was working in the Instructional Development Center and we got a grant where we had to write a computer-aided instruction program to teach French. Interestingly, there was no such kind of program available. And this small company that was new had donated one computer to every school in the state of Vermont, and they had no software to be able to use on it. So the grant included the development of software to teach French. I had never touched a computer and I don't speak French. So it was an interesting learning opportunity. Oh, and the company was Apple. Back in 1982, long time ago. <laughs> so that was fun. And I really wish that I had known how integrated computers were gonna be because I'd probably taken a different career path and be far more wealthy. I mentioned earlier that I have been laid off three times as organizations have shifted, downsized, changed directions. I've started two businesses. As a result, almost always seem to rotate back into being in business, but this time I think I'm, as a business owner, here to stay. I think that I'm mature enough and, and comfortable enough with my skills to be able to say that this is a good fit. My first business was doing desktop publishing before desktop publishing was a thing. I had just had my first child and had gotten laid off. During the process of being on maternity leave, I had sort of started this business as a project for a friend and produced his engineering textbook for Van Austin Reinhold. And it became a thing after I got laid off, Van Austin Reinhold offered me the opportunity to continue doing desktop publishing. Most of my mornings were actually spent on the phone with a company called WordPerfect with their tech support as I tried to tell them, yeah, I've already made your software do what you tell me that it can't do. Now I need you to figure out how to do it, what I need it to do next. And I guess the, the biggest challenge for them was the thousand page book that I produced that actually was indexed. And it was something that they told me all along couldn't be done. And we finally figured out, yeah, it could. So that was kind of fun and exciting. My son, who is 29, he would tell you that I know more than I should about bending technology to my will. And I think he says that with pride, but I, I can't always tell. Um, personally, I am and have always been a really fierce mom. Um, in addition to my son who lives in Maine, I also have a daughter who lives down in the East Bay. Um, as we mentioned, she has a wedding coming up in 2023. And I am looking for vineyards because she wants a vineyard wedding. So I will be spending the next several months hunting down vineyards. I love my adult kids. They are fantastic. And those of you who have got younger ones, I am so in sympathy with you for what you've gone through for the past 18 months. It's been crazy. But I'm here to tell you that on the other side of the world, it's amazing having adult kids. My daughter will tell you that I raised her by asking her questions and never telling her what to do. I'm sure that it was incredibly annoying, but it is so much fun watching her do the same thing to her friends. And it also has served her super well in um, her, her particular field, which is in recruiting for a tech company. She asks great questions and actually listens to the answers, which is good. So, you know, we mentioned that I've got a diverse background. So I moved from higher ed to my own business. And then I worked in commercial construction. Long haul. I was a project scheduler for Intel when they were building a fab. 
Anybody who understands project management will cringe when I tell you that my project schedule had 80,000 activities, all of which were resource loaded. And every week I ran what if scenarios. What if they changed the installation of something here? How would that impact the rest of the organization and the rest of the schedule? Those computer skills that I had picked up along the way, really, really strong and really good. We moved to Virginia from Arizona and I picked up being a project manager. Um, hard hat, boots, safety glasses, had them all. My kids loved it. A lot of times when they were sick, they would come and work underneath my plan table and they would go sick camping, which is what they called it. It was great. The, the guys that I worked for were fabulous and really incredibly supportive of a working mom. They allowed me to time shift whenever I needed to take care of the kids, which is how I managed $27 million of work annually and ran the PTA, multiple choirs, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, sports, and anything else that the kids needed. It was a crazy time. And at the time, my son was also diagnosed as having Asperger's syndrome. It brought a highly focused approach to managing his life and making him be in a scenario that he would be successful. And there isn't a moment I would trade from it, but it was exhausting. I have always worked, not always, but since then I've worked from home and been a remote worker. So I started doing that many years before it became a thing also. Then I ended up switching into nonprofits, which I absolutely love. There is a special place for organizations that work with a mission. It's great. I did fundraising and board development and did a lot of meeting planning, I planned large meetings for years. And I find that I am much more of a strategic thinker than, I, I love details, but I'm better at planning the strategic plan. <laughs> My ideal client typically would have between two and 75 employees, been in business for at least three years, has the financial resources and is comfortable bringing in an advisor. Typically the person would have started the business with a vision that's kind of gotten fuzzy or distracted over time. I'm definitely in the weeds and need some help taming that operational chaos. And I guess this is the most important, is able to commit to implementing a strategic plan that will make change in their world. My goal is to create less stress and grant more time. I think the beauty of owning your own business is that you get to make a statement like the next one. A person has a really positive worldview and has a vision of opportunity, optimism, and a let's get it done. And outside of work, a person typically is going to be active and supports the community. Let's see, what else can I tell you? The breadth of experience that I got in working in nonprofits is what I use for my consulting business. And so you have an opportunity to wear a lot of different hats, especially in a small association or a small nonprofit. And I, I'm excited that I get to bring all of that with me into the business that I have now. I was telling someone the other day that a lot of the projects that I've worked in, worked in have bigger P&Ls than many small businesses. So what I can bring to the table is that bigger experience and bigger organization skill set and help smaller businesses figure out how to do what they do better. I am looking forward to doing more volunteering. I'm excited that I just signed up to work as a fundraiser for Canine Companions at their festival in October, which will be a lot of fun. I am going to be looking for a new four-legged companion after the new year, so that I'm hoping will be able to, to help me with that. And that's who I am and what I do.